Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about writing your research questions and hypotheses. Um, so you write research questions and hypotheses to narrow down your purpose statement. So you should have already written your purpose statement for your research project. Um, and now you're going to further refine that into very specific questions and hypotheses. So in qualitative research, uh, you're going to pose research questions and you're not going to use objectives or hypotheses like you would in quantitative research, which I'll talk about next. So in qualitative, you're posing research questions, but there are no objectives or hypotheses. So your qualitative research questions can take two forms. Uh, you'll have one or two central questions, which are broad questions that are looking for exploration of whatever is the central phenomenon that you're trying to study. Um, so these questions are exploring the, the general phenomenon and complex factors about that phenomenon. Um, and then if you want to, you can get more specific and include some sub questions uh, that will narrow down each of those central questions. So you might have one central question or two, and then you might have a few sub questions that help to narrow down the focus of each of those central questions if you choose to, but that is not necessary. Okay, for qualitative research questions, you, your questions will start with a word like what or how. Um, so it should be kind of exploratory. It should be an open-ended question. Uh, you're focusing on a single phenomenon or concept. So you do wanna make sure that you have narrowed down the focus of your study. Uh, you wanna use exploratory verbs like report, describe, discover, generate, explore. Um, so words that indicate that you're looking to learn more about this topic as opposed to directional words that would indicate some kind of relationship or uh, direction between uh, variables. So you wanna avoid words like affect, influence, impact, determine, cause, and relate. Um, those words would be appropriate in quantitative research questions, but not in qualitative research. Um, let's see, let's keep going here. Uh, quantitative hypotheses and objectives. Um, so about the relationships among variables that the investigator seeks to know. So your hypotheses and objectives, you are writing predictions about what you think the relationships will be among variables or what you think the outcomes will be of your study. Um, so quantitative hypotheses are predictions about the expected relationships. And you also could write hypotheses that estimate population values based on data from the sample. Um, you might include quantitative objectives also, um, but this is not very common in health and social sciences. It's more common in other areas of research. Um, and in when they are included, it's usually for proposals for funding. Okay, quantitative research questions come in a few forms. Um, so one type of quantitative research question would be describing outcomes. So in that type of question, you're not predicting relationships, uh, but you're just predicting what the outcome will be for the participants in your study on some thing that you're measuring, so some variable. So for example, we could say, what is the frequency and variation of scores on fill in the blank for the variable for fill in the blank participants in the study? Or you would predict that that variable will be this number or this value for the participants in the study. Um, examining the relationship among variables. That's another type of research question that you could use. Um, so in that case, you are predicting what the relationship will be. And I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. And then finally, you wanna have a null hypothesis so whatever type of research question you choose, you would have the question or that is describing uh, what you're trying to study. And then you'd have the null hypothesis, which basically states um, that there won't be any effect. There won't be any difference or relationship. Um, and so essentially they should be opposites. Your null hypothesis should be opposite of 
uh, your research question or your alternative hypothesis, which is saying that there will be something to detect here. And the null hypothesis is saying that there won't be something to detect here. So then after you complete your research, then you would say the null hypothesis was accepted or the alternative hypothesis was accepted um, or rejected alternatively. Okay, so uh, research questions and hypotheses. Um, so they should follow logically from a relationship among variables in a theory. So remember, you're building on what is already in the literature and what theories already are available to help you predict this relationship. So you should be developing your research questions and hypotheses based on already <laughs> established theories and information. Um, so you're not just coming up with it out of nowhere. You should be able to defend why you chose those values or why you expect to see that kind of relationship. Um, research questions or hypotheses uh, may indicate cause and effect logic. So in quantitative research, depending on your research design, um, you can um, try to predict cause and effect. Uh, but if you're going to predict cause and effect, not simply correlation, you're trying to predict causation, then you have to make sure that your research methodology, that the way you're designing your study is going to be in such a way that you can actually determine cause and effect and not simply correlation. Um, there shouldn't be redundancies in your research questions and hypotheses, which means that in most cases, you just don't need to write both. Um, so you can write research questions or hypotheses. In some cases, like if you're writing a dissertation or something, you might be required to include both, um, but you're trying really hard not to make them redundant. Um, so in most cases, you don't need to include both. Um, when you're writing hypotheses, you want to make sure that your alternative hypothesis and your null hypothesis are written in the same kind of format, like it's the same sentence structure, and you're just changing simply whether there will be a difference or not, or what the direction of the difference will be. Um, so you'll have a null hypothesis or multiple, you would have a null hypothesis to partner with every alternative hypothesis that you have. Um, so an alternative hypothesis or a directional hypothesis would predict the direction of difference or a relationship, and non-directional would simply say there is a relationship, but we're not predicting the direction. So you might have maybe four hypotheses that you're looking to test, and you would have a null hypothesis to match each of those hypotheses. So you'd have a null hypothesis for each one saying no difference. For mixed methods, you're going to include the qualitative and quantitative hypotheses and research questions um, that would follow the same kind of format and the same kind of ideas as what we've just been discussing. Uh, but then also after that, you're going to include a mixed methods research question. Um, so the qualitative and quantitative questions focus the purpose of your study, and then you include the mixed methods question in addition, because the mixed methods question needs to convey to the reader why you need to integrate both qualitative and quantitative methods in your study. So the mixed methods question should get across um, why it's important to integrate the two. So you'll use the same guidelines for creating your qualitative and quantitative questions and hypotheses. And then when you're ordering those questions, it, when you're writing your um, manuscript or your paper, whatever it is you're writing, um, you'll order those questions according to how you're designing your study. So if you're doing all of the qualitative and quantitative work simultaneously throughout, then you can order them in whatever way makes the most sense as you're writing. Uh, but if you are doing two or even three separate phases, then you would order your questions in order that you are conducting that research according to how you've designed your methodology. So there are a few different forms that uh, mixed methods research questions take. Um, so we could have mixed methods research questions that convey the methods and procedures that you're planning to use for your study uh, might convey the content of this study, and it should combine the methods and content in a hybrid 
question, or you could combine them into a hybrid question. So you can have a question of methods and procedures, one about the content or one that blends those two. Uh, so write separate questions or hypotheses followed by a mixed methods question. Um, so your mixed methods question should highlight the two approaches as well as their combined strength. So that, that's the whole point of the mixed methods research question is that you are highlighting why you are blending both types of methodology into a mixed methods study. Um, so it'd be at the beginning or as they emerge in phases and this places emphasis on the two approaches. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.